Let me preface this with, if I hadn't had this disease, I wouldn't believe it. This is a weird disease. Hello, and thank you for tuning in to Morgellons Disease Discussion and Microscopy Videos. I'm your host, Jeremy Murphy, and today we're going to take an in-depth look at the feature-length documentary, Skin Deep, The Battle Over Morgellons. Skin Deep allows its audience to experience the reality of Morgellons through the emotions of the individuals who play a role in establishing the history of this cryptic phenomenon. Through these characters, we feel elation, self-consciousness, desperation, fear, and devastation, all while the wheels of time deliver us to a compelling milestone achievements and ongoing scientific investigation. Skin Deep memorably carries its viewer through the origins of modern-day Morgellons disease up to the latest scientific revelations. People who see this film will know what it feels like to have Morgellons, will relate to the characters that are skeptical about what Morgellons is, and will remember how they felt the moment they realized that Morgellons is a real disease. So one night, Cindy brought in her little microscope and we all took turns and we could totally see these fibers. And it was the strangest things any of us have ever seen. So she was saying one doctor had called them folia du. So when she brought the microscope in, she was like, well, there's a psychological term, uh, folia family, if the whole family believes a certain thing. And so we were laughing and going, that must be, we must be a filet de ICU because we all saw the fibers and it just helped us believe that what's going on in the medical community if we can see them and acknowledge them and they can't. Skin Deep presents the story of Cindy, a registered nurse with Morgellons, as she navigates from a career and progresses through marriage to ultimately becoming director of the organization which funds research initiatives and is named after her late husband, Charles Holman. Affects many in the Bay Area. KTVU Health and Science. They showed the sores that looked just like mine. They suggested that you look at these lesions with a handheld scope. The next day, he went to Radio Shack, got a little handheld scope, came home, he said, let me look at your back. So he started looking at my back, and he said, Cindy, that's what you've got. There's not a doubt in my mind. Then I said, well, I want to look at it. And I held the scope over one of the sores that I had on my arms, and I looked at it, and I could see these filaments all wound up around each other. Through the film, we see other characters elsewhere, each experiencing Morgellons from their own point of view. Characters on each front, believers and skeptics alike, and even those on the sidelines that are analyzing the effects of patients experiencing a contested disease. We see two brothers torn apart by their differing experiences with the disease and witness their efforts to reconcile afterwards. Skin Deep accomplishes presenting the Morgellons phenomenon in a way that the general audience can relate to. He's my brother, he's a doctor, he's, he'd be the first person I needed to talk to. And his first response was, I think you need psychiatric care. So the process of reconciliation, uh, we're in the middle of it right now. The doctor part of me and the brother part of me, I think they're inextricably linked. I can hear the stuff you say, but there, it's, it's like if you see a word, you can't not read that word. Mm -hmm. I can't listen to your symptoms and not come up with a differential diagnosis. This is stuff that's ingrained in you. It's like, this is how you cure a person. This is how you cure a person. You get great results. 99% uh -huh. of the people you touch, you're probably healing. And so this 1% of weird cases that comes through isn't getting caught. Unfortunately, that 1% is devastating people. Dr. Feldman, for example, is an accomplished dermatologist who sees many Morgellons patients in his practice. From his perspective, Morgellons is a psychological disorder. Don't be quick to assume that he's being portrayed as an antagonist, however. In fact, the film demonstrates that Dr. Feldman treats each of his patients with respect and genuinely cares about their well-being. Nice to meet you. I'm going to take some of this alcohol off the wall here. This is just to protect you from doctor office germs. Make sure I don't give you some kind of 
MRSA infection or flesh-eating bacteria. The transition between how Dr. Feldman experiences Morgellons and how Cindy experiences Morgellons culminate when she invites him to speak at the annual Morgellons Disease Conference in Austin, Texas, where the latest scientific findings are presented. There must be better ways for patients and their physicians to work together. To speak to us about this, we've invited a dermatologist with a broad, fascinating background. He started his career as a test tube research scientist. When that career didn't go so well, he switched to become an expert on psoriasis. His limitations as a physician became clear when he began studying how poorly patients took medications he prescribed. I present to you Dr. Stephen Feldman. Thank you so much for that uh, really wonderful introduction that I wrote. <laughs> One scene defines the narrative and illustrates the struggle of this story, the quest for knowledge. There's an old saying, knowing is half the battle. In this scene, Dr. Feldman sits with microbiologist Marianne Middleveen while she shows him what her research demonstrates in regards to an infectious agent and how the fibers of Morgellons patients are of human origin and not textile in nature. Let's look at his reactions in that scene. He's talking about human hairs? Because he studied them and he found that these particular Morgellons fibers, well, that's he a found hair, right? that, exactly, that it had cuticular scaling. Yeah, that's a hair. Then, exactly. And, well, yeah. some of these fibers are hair. Well, okay, fine. Okay. If you sent somebody hairs, that's so, so. So hairs get stuck in the scab, and you're telling and, me and, that, and you're telling me that these patients are delusional because they happen to have human biofibers. You think that that's delusions no, of peristalsis? Obviously, I don't think people are delusional because they say they have hair. You have hair? I, I got do, hair. but I don't have blue hair. As we can see, Dr. Feldman stops and thinks about the knowledge that Marianne presents to him. His educated understanding of a serious condition is challenged. He's aware Morgellons causes his patients a great deal of pain and trauma, but can he accept the evidence that there's an infectious process behind it? There are several memorable characters in Skin Deep, but Charles Holman himself stills the show early on as we relive his romance with Cindy and empathize with his concern about her mysterious condition. Through old video and audio recordings, Skin Deep affords us the opportunity to meet Charles Holman. We're there as Charles and Cindy experience skepticism by professional dermatologists. And when they are featured on the local news in a piece showcasing the contested illness, we see him try to reason with doctors on Cindy's behalf before another dermatologist describes a condition where both husband and wife together are delusional. Charles embodies the struggle of having Morgellons one day universally recognized, and to that end, it is fitting the organization Cindy Heads Up is named in his honor. Charles said, there's a couple of things I want you to do before we get married, and I said, okay, well, what? And he says, see a dermatologist about whatever this is going on with your skin. We begin to go to dermatologists, but no doctor knew what was causing this. One of the best aspects of this film is the sound design. The director manages to capture the emotions of each of the players and convey them back to the audience with the reinforcing of moving ambience. If you are an audiophile, you won't be disappointed here. The story has clear progression, and the endings for each of the characters are truly memorable. So, does Skin Deep go deep enough? Viewers of Skin Deep will walk away knowing that the Morgellons phenomenon didn't end with the CDC study in 2012 and that the patients very much need and deserve better treatment. Joining us to talk about what we can do to advocate for better treatment is Skin Deep Director, Pi Ware. Hey, Pi, how are you doing today? Good, Jeremy, how are you? Oh, I'm doing great, man. Well, to start off, can you tell us a little bit about who Pi Ware is and uh, who are your influences as a filmmaker? Sure. Um... I'm a filmmaker and an editor myself, so I have done a, a few films in the narrative world, uh, independent films, and then I do a lot of editing on shows like Fastest Car for Netflix, America's Got Talent for NBC, uh, American Idol, So You Think You Can Dance, a lot of these competition reality shows and award shows like the Oscars and Emmys. Um, and I got interested in 
or Jalen's disease, because I've also cut a lot of um, documentaries and I wanted to direct something and I, I wanted to do something about um, denialism, right? So when I was a kid, I saw that my uncle was eating baby food for dinner, which was really weird. And I asked him why, and he said he had an ulcer and the, the medical establishment at the time recommended psychotherapy as a recourse for ulcers because it was thought that his problem was stress and it was related to how his mother had fed him when he was a child and it turned out to be a bacterial infection and um, that stayed with me. That was pretty interesting to, to see how wrong the medical establishment was in that particular case. And then I saw um, global warming was also another one of these uh, denial problems where I was taught in college at the University of Virginia that uh, global warming was a farce, there was no climate change, it was all just a hoax that was being perpetrated on, on people. And then it turns out, you know, years later that uh, it's, it's real. And I thought, well, maybe Morgellons disease, which I discovered through researching a little bit of Lyme disease, maybe Morgellons disease is one of those phenomenons where there's a real disease here but the medical establishment isn't recognizing it yet and it's causing a lot of suffering. And I thought, well, that would be cool. That would be interesting to do a, a, um, a documentary, a full length documentary on that because I had, um, I had seen a couple of news items on it and it was all very sensationalistic. And I thought a full length documentary would be the way to go to really get into this and, and, and see some of the stories uh, of the patients. So to answer your other question, which was uh, what are my influences? I would say, as far as a narrative filmmaker, who I love uh, would be kind of the American masters, you know, Spielberg and Scorsese. Uh, Kubrick is a big, big influence, or at least in my heart. I don't know if he influences my documentary filmmaking, but he certainly does um, stick with me. All of his films are, are dear to me. Uh, Paul Thomas Anderson. In the documentary world, I love Lucy Walker, uh, Kirby Dick, Joe Berlinger is fantastic. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, because I work in documentaries as an editor, I also have worked with some of these people, you know, and they've, they directly influenced this film, Skin Deep, The Battle Over Morgellons, by seeing cuts or giving me advice when I've called them and asked them questions. So it's been great. And it's not just the directors who've influenced me. It's also some of these documentary writers and editors like uh, Jeff Gilbert or Mark Monroe or particularly Doug Blush, um, some of these people who are they're, they're not the face of these bigger documentaries, but they're behind the scenes and they're, they're crafting these things. And so since I crafted uh, most of, of this film myself, I, I really relied on a lot of the expert opinions of, of uh, friends and colleagues in the documentary film world. I was really lucky to benefit from that expertise. So is it the case that while you were working on the film and working, getting this assistance that you were actually introducing other professionals to the reality of Morgellons and the science. Right. Yeah. And uh, what kind of reactions were you getting from them? Well, it's, it's interesting. Most of them were open-minded about hearing about Morgellons disease. Um, certainly people like Jen Brea, who did the movie Unrest, um, which is about myalgic encephalomyelitis, which is you know, also known as chronic fatigue syndrome. Um, she'd gone through the medical denialism of her disease and her condition. So folks who'd seen her film or who were involved with her filmmaking certainly were open. Uh, Kirby was very open to hearing about new diseases. And I think a lot of folks who are educated in the history of medicine know that there's a lot of conditions that come up, whether it's, you know, multiple sclerosis, which is once believed to be hysterical paralysis or ulcers, as we talked about, uh, even like fibromyalgia, which is pretty well recognized uh, across the medical spectrum, but was once thought of as, you know, not real. A lot of folks know that that's, that's uh, a historical cycle of new conditions coming up and the medical authority denying them because they don't understand them and they certainly weren't taught that in medical school, so how could it be possible? That's a bit of the attitude that a lot of people are aware of. However, I have encountered among my peers in the, in the documentary film world, particularly there's one filmmaker whose father is a doctor and she was very adamant about defending doctors who might deny the reality of Morgellons disease. And I was, I was a bit shocked at how adamant she was. And it reminded me of the adamacy of that climate change denier from 1992 when I was at the University of Virginia who was saying, you're gonna hear about this phenomenon, it's totally false. And even though it was the first time I had personally ever heard about global warming, I was a sophomore in college at the time, yeah. 
the adamancy with which he denied this phenomenon that was coming up was too far. It, it, it was suspicious to me, and I thought, well, maybe there's more to this thing that he keeps denying than meets the eye. And it was that sort of, I don't know if you want to call it intuition or spidey sense or however you want to call it. It was just a, it was a sense that I, I held on to. And when I heard about more Jellens, I thought, this, is, this might be in the same arena. I want to check it out. You know, maybe, maybe it is a real phenomenon. Maybe there's a real disease here and these people need help or the sort of conspiracy theory side of me, which I like to engage on a fun level, was thinking, or maybe they're all crazy. You know, that's kind of cool from a sort of movie perspective. Um, and it turns out that no, they're not all crazy, that uh, there's absolutely a real disease here. Uh, but there are good reasons that I found in the investigation why doctors might think Morgellons disease is not a real disease. Um, if you go on the internet, and I know you have, Jeremy, and you've seen on YouTube in particular, there's a lot of outlandish theories about government mind control through chemtrails and nanotechnology. And when you hear those, those explanations, it, it, it throws a lot of doubt into your mind. It casts a lot of doubt on the veracity of Morgellons disease as a whole if you haven't studied it yet. So if you're a doctor kind of doing a review of YouTube or you're, you know, somebody a normal citizen who's just going to Wikipedia, for example, to find out what is more challenge disease, um, you're going to get a very different account than what you would get if you spent a day, a full day researching what more challenge disease is. Yeah. And when you say researching, you're talking about going to accredited uh, sites like uh, PubMed, uh, where actual research that's been peer reviewed, accepted and published in prestigious journals are indexed. And I okay. think, um, is it, have you noticed that it's the case on both sides of the aisle, patients and doctors who are skeptical that when they subscribe to a belief, they can become overzealous in defending it? I have noticed that for sure. I, that's not just in more general disease, but in especially nowadays with the kind of uh, polemics that are in politics, people, they get very, very angry. And maybe it has something to do with the anonymity that's afforded one upon the internet that you can kind of yell and shout and defend and scream and insult without repercussions because you're not actually in the room with the other person. But I have definitely noticed uh, the overzealous qualities of, of, of people defending their opinion. And when that's, and it's interesting you mentioned that, it was really one of my intentions in making the film to not be overzealous, to not slam my opinion or the film's opinion down someone's throat, but to really represent both sides of the debate and then to kind of sort through it. I don't know, about, it's intriguing, but it may be a gentler way. Um, I don't think shaming people who are ignorant of something. I mean, I was very ignorant of Morgellons disease before I started researching, and I don't think anyone should shame me for thinking maybe it's this or maybe it's that or maybe it's not real. Like, I don't think shaming or shouting down someone's going to help them learn. I think understanding the perspective and saying, well, take a look at this science, take a look at this repeatable experiment that's that these different labs have done and, and found. I think if you respect the person learning about Morgellons, then they will show respect back to the teacher. Um, that was always my theory when I was, I used to teach high school. That was always my theory to, to show respect first. And I wanted to carry that philosophy into the film, which is you respect those who carry both opinions, whether it, they think it's real or not. And I think you find that in the film, they're well represented. There's, there's good reasons why you would think Morgellons isn't real, and there's good reasons why you think it is real, and it is an infectious disease. And and over time, as you watch the film, it seems like the infectious disease side wins out. Yeah, well, and particularly when people subscribe to a belief, they develop an identity around that. Uh, mm. It becomes part of their persona. So even if you aren't attacking the person, you're challenging their ideas, they may still take that personally because that's something they identify with. Uh, it's talking about the chemtrails and the nanotechnology. It is kind of hard to get people to look at the other side of Morgellons, the scientific aspect of it, because they're really tossing everything out the door when they're confronted with all this uh, obvious misinformation to them, 
not so much to somebody who's afraid, desperate, and just looking for any kind of answer that makes sense to them. Which uh, it's a tough one. It's you know I think maybe we can we can rethink that as a culture. Like I grew up with very different opinions than I hold now. But people like to be right, you know. Especially you know if you're in a relationship or you're married, you know that, that like you'll 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 scream at each other and just I'm right, you know. You you jeopardize the marriage. You throw plates against walls or whatever you know you do just to make sure the other person understands you're right. And maybe that same kind of instinct where you identify with your opinion and feel that it's the, the moral ground you stand upon happens in the medical debate about Margellans as well. Yeah, people definitely have to evolve and progress through life uh, to really to get the most out of it, I think. But let me ask you. Yeah, you know, I think you're right. It's like, and before you get to the last question, I just want to say, like, if we weren't afraid to be wrong, if, the, if a doctor wasn't afraid to not know, to be ignorant, to be wrong, that would solve so many of our problems when it comes to Morgellons disease. It oh, would yeah. solve so much suffering that happens when patients are told that it's all in their head or when patients are told that it's somehow their fault. That's, that's interesting. I think if we just weren't afraid to be wrong. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, humility is definitely a trait that is, is can't get enough of, and especially in today's society. Let yeah. me ask you, did you, experience any kind of blowback, any kind of uh, repercussions from the stigma of trying to, uh, of working with the contested illness? Not really. I mean, I've tried to be respectful and I think that's worked out. The blowback is online if it's, and it's kind of random. Um, folks that are, like you say, very tied up in their identity, their opinions tied up with their, you know, someone may think, oh, this is, this is really just Bartonella another infectious disease and you've got it all wrong and they'll scream at me on the internet part of the it's part of the course you know that's part of the game that's part of yeah. what it is to do a, a movie is to be out there in the public and, and to put forth an opinion i don't really find any blowback in person from folks you know we may exchange ideas with doctors who believe differently but everyone's very respectful on the telephone or in person yeah um, it's really only online that you start to see people say things like well, it's all caps and a lot of exclamation points, and the word idiot comes out a lot. But yeah. Well, yeah, it's the, the keyboard warriors. Um, well, that's good that you didn't have to deal with the stigma. Were there other aspects of producing this film that were also challenging or that were equally challenging? Yeah, I mean, with most documentaries, budgetary constraints is the big challenge. And that's no exception for, for Skin Deep. We didn't have a lot of money to begin with. I had put some savings aside, which I used all of to create just a little sizzle reel. I thought, well, this sizzle reel um, will be a little a sample of what the film could be. It was like a little short sample of, of what the, the full length documentary could be. And, and I thought, we'll just use that as a fundraising technique. And then as I kept going um, and we weren't getting really any grants um, from the documentary world, I started to worry, but you know, we'd have to stop down and stop production and then stop and, and, and turn to the community, really, the more generous community and say, hey, are there any organizations or, or, or even individuals who can help us by donating some some money? And, you know, we are we are affiliated with the independent documentary, I'm sorry, the, the International Documentary Association, which is a nonprofit and they are a fiscal sponsor. So people are able to donate and, and get a tax write off. So. So individuals came, even individuals who were ill and not much money, they would send $5 or $10. Um, and then there were organizations like ILADS, uh, the, the ILADF, their educational fund gave us a grant, uh, the John Drew Lyme Foundation gave us a grant and that sustained us. And then we did a Kickstarter and the Morgellons community came out and our friends and family here in Los Angeles and elsewhere came out and helped us uh, raise $26,000. So those were just lifelines that just came, but you know, you had to, as a person, I had to work really hard to get all that going. And I'm an editor by trade, so I have a full-time job. I mean, I'm in my office right now um, yeah. on a television <laughs> show and things are slow right now, so I can quickly do this interview, but I'm, uh, you know, it's, it's been trying to juggle my schedule. That's been very difficult to, to volunteer as a director on a film and raise money and produce the film and edit the film while carrying a more than full-time job load uh, on television shows. 
uh, as an editor has been uh, has been a challenge but we're done with the movie we we succeeded yeah and what came out actually uh, exceeds all of my expectations i i was kind of anticipating going through a lot of the sample reels that i'd already seen but not only was most of it material that I hadn't been exposed to yet. I thought the story, even though it's a documentary, the story was very cohesive. All the parts fit together. You felt each of the characters. And at the very end, you definitely felt a sense of closure. Hi, what can we do to get this movie in front of people that need to see it? And who needs to see it? And what resources do we have available to, to get the job done? We need to have the Mortellans community screen this film for others, right? So we're in educational distribution right now. What that means is it's not available on iTunes and Amazon. It's available as an educational DVD. So our distributor, The Video Project, has these DVDs on sale and you get a, a limited performance license with this, with the purchase of a DVD. Uh, and it's all available on morejellensmovie.org if you actually wanna purchase one of these. And the idea is that you, you, you purchase a DVD and then you maybe you partner with a community organization or a library or a school, or if you're a, a teacher or professor, you show your classroom and you then facilitate a discussion afterwards. So it's not just the film, it's also a conversation. And what comes with the DVD is a 20 page discussion and action guide that I wrote with the medical historian and philosopher, Harry Quinn Schoen, who appears in the movie. Uh, we're very proud of the, of the discussion packet and I think it's going to be super helpful for folks. Um, and so that's really what we need to do is um, is to screen the movie. You know, it, it hasn't gotten into very many film festivals, which was a surprise to me because I'm a, uh, I've had a lot of films at festivals, Sundance and AFI Fest. And, and this subject matter, I think, isn't readily exciting to festival programmers. So it's going to take the community a little bit of activism and a little bit of handholding and, and corralling of audiences to sit down in front of a, a skin disease movie, right? And, and say, this is important. This needs to be seen by you. And I think once people see the film, you know, we've had some very good, very strong, very emotional reactions after the screenings. Our premiere sold out and had a huge standing ovation and people stayed for a Q and A and then a second Q and A. I think after people see the film and they're really going to be happy that they've seen it. And I, and I really want to urge all the folks out there who have more gelins or who have a family member who has more gelins or a friend to get involved in sharing this film with your community, whether that's a large community and you can rent out a, a, um, a theater and pack it with 200 people, or whether it's a small community and it's for you and family members and a couple friends. I think we've got to take steps, take steps, I mean, big steps, little steps, take steps to make progress happen and, and get Magellan's awareness out into the world. Yeah, because I think for most people, and tell me if if you think this is true as well, uh, the Morgellons, the book on Morgellons pretty much closed in 2012. Around January 2012, people pretty much figured out that, okay, Morgellons, there's nothing to it. These patients just really need some uh, psychiatric assistance. And so when I do get people to take a look at the research, uh, particularly professionals are especially shocked. Um, I, I see over and over again, oh my God, it's real. I can't believe, wow, how did this happen? You know, And your film actually goes into how this happened with the yeah. 2012 CDC, CDC study. Right. Yeah, it's, um, it's, it's not a, People want things to be simple, right? They want an explanation to be simple, right? It's either all doctors are arrogant and wrong or all patients are crazy, right? But that's not the case. And with the CDC study, that's also not the case. It's not the CDC is totally incompetent and stupid or all these people are crazy and the CDC got it exactly right. Yeah. What happened is a lot of shades of gray, but what the end result, and you'll have to see the movie to kind of have Randy Wymore, Dr. Randy Wymore from Oklahoma State University break down exactly how this went, but it turns out that the working definition of a Morgellons patient for the CDC did not include having fibers embedded in the skin. It was really the belief of fibers. And that's a very different thing. So yeah. when it came down to it and they 
took samples off of people. None of those fibers were embedded in skin, and they had zero Morgellons patients in their study, according to the definition of Morgellons disease from the Charles E. Holman Foundation. And CDC scientists uh, just did not believe that these fibers could appear embedded in patient skin, and as a result of that, they just overlook the potential of qualifying patients that way? It could be. When I started investigating it, I did run across a lot of folks who were less than credible, but they took the moniker Morgellons disease and they applied it to themselves, the term they said fit their issues, and then they would start to talk about um, symptoms that didn't include fibers, and they would say that, you know, there are parasites in their bodies from the ink of grocery bags and very outlandish ideas. And so, just as somebody doing the investigation, it started to cast doubt just in my mind. So I can only imagine when you're the CDC and you, you, you begin the experiment with doubt in your mind and you meet some folks who might have less than credible explanations for their symptoms, how the doubt could grow, how that can yeah. color the experiment, right? Like that's a common knowledge. Like if you have a, a prejudice and you go into a, an experiment, a scientific experiment, you can sometimes just confirm your own prejudice with what you find if you're not careful. Right. And I think that might have been what happened with the CDC. And well, this is a very important issue because Morgellons patients, I believe the majority of this is a very high uh, association with suicide with these patient groups. Yeah. The calculations that um, Dr. Ginger Savely did is that uh, a Morgellons patient is 800 times more likely to commit suicide than a regular citizen, 800. Yeah, it's, Seriously. and in fact, I mean, I don't wanna give anything away from the film, but you know, people who are in the film are no longer with us. Certain people uh, in the film are no longer with us. And, and they, uh, that was, you know, they died by suicide. Hmm. Well, hopefully we can utilize this resource to prevent that from happening. More Absolutely, more. that's the thing, man. Let's give the world hope. Let's show this film. Let's have a conversation. Because hope is what prevents suicide. And hope is what will get a government to fund research and to treatment. Absolutely. Uh, Pieware, morgellonsmovie.org. Thank you so much for being with us this evening, Pi. I'm definitely looking forward to seeing Skin Deep. And we look forward to have you back on the show again sometime soon. All right, Jeremy. Thank you so much. Take care.